the Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Xander Kane and Android Virus. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cemetery Gates Podcast. What's up, I'm Android <laughs> Virus, uh, joined by my illustrious co-host, Mr. Xander Kane. How are you, sir? Hey, uh, good, I'm good. Just gonna throw on some Predator 2 here while we record. Oh, how interesting. Yeah. That's so a very that polarizing thing, right? Everybody likes Predator. Predator 2 is great, because it's, it's, I mean, the first one's sleazy in its own right. Right. But the second I mean, one's got some extra sleaze on it. It does. And I got it on VHS, so it's extra special. Mm, I liked it. I liked Predator 2. I saw Predator 2 in California when I was a freshman in high school. Oh, I don't oh. remember the first time I saw. Actually, I do. I saw. So my uncle back in the day would, you know, I'm sure you probably did this or your friends at least did this nonetheless. Uh, where you would get two VCRs and rent them from the video store and watch one VHS while you set another one to record at the same time so you could mm-hmm. basically steal it. Uh, and my uncle was, like, huge into that. Like, he had a closet that had, like, thousands of VHS um, tapes. So that's how I saw Predator 2, um, Angel and Avenging Angel. That's how I saw those movies. That's how mm-hmm. I saw the Critters movies. Uh so I saw Goonies, saw a ton of stuff. Little Just did I ripped. know, but my uncle was a fucking pirate. <laughs> How you get all this cool stuff? I have the coolest uncle in the world. <laughs> no wonder wow. he's hidden in a closet. I remember yeah. watching it one time, and my uncle was gone, and she was like, "Yeah, just go into the closet and get uh, get one of the get one of the tapes." Luckily, there was no like porn or anything, and it was just like stuff, you know, big blockbuster movies and stuff, and. uh I put one in and my aunt walked by and it said, you know, it has the FBI warning on the front of sure. it. And she's like, oh, don't worry about that. Your uncle's silly. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> He's breaking the law. <laughs> yeah. He's but anyways, that's, <laughs> that's how I. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, uh, the closest I got to that, because my dad. My dad was a pretty cheap bastard growing up. Like we didn't have cable. Uh, until I was a senior in high school And <laughs> that's because he could afford it Because my sisters had already moved out And I think he could have afforded it all along It's not like we were poor He was just like, why do we need cable? Like, right? I don't care He gives yeah. the antenna, we get three channels well, what, Yeah, what, we don't need fucking cable But we got, the, you, we got the news, what else do you fucking want? <laughs> yeah, well, and I was like that typical latchkey kid That grew up That before I went to school, I was eating a bowl of cereal in front of the TV. And I remember early, early in the morning, like it would be 20, 20 minute workout. <laughs> I don't know if you guys remember 20 minute workout. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm going to have to tag you in a 20 minute workout. bro. You're going <laughs> to laugh your ass off. So it was 20 minute workout. And then right after that, it was, it was, um, what was his name? Specter man. And oh, it was, I do remember Specter man. A complete ripoff of you know whatever other Ultraman, Spectre yeah, Man, yeah, Spectre Man, and then right after that it was like, right when I was getting ready to go out the door to school, it was uh, Voltron, but it was like the cars of Voltron. It was before the lions got big, right? So it was okay. ever whatever whatever they it were throwing at us, then. yeah. And then so whatever plays throughout the day. And then you get home from school. They got this shit timed out. And then right when you get home from school, it's like G.I. Joe, Masters of the Universe, Mask, like just lined up in the afternoon. And it's like, hmm, that's how we grew up, you know. But so we we, and then, you know, your dad comes home. I want to watch the news just like that. You know, <laughs> yeah. Give by old Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. No, he was, he was a Coors Light guy. 
<laughs> and um, yeah, man. So that's kind of how we grew up, but, but kind of similar story to yours. And I, I've told this story in other podcasts and there's, there's a couple funny things where he, so my aunt had cable and my, his sister-in-law, my mom's sister, and he'd be like, Hey, uh, I want to, um, I want to watch, I want this movie. Can you record it for me? And so they all had betas because they thought beta was the shit. Right. So my aunt, my aunt had a beta. My dad had a beta and she would record movies for him, but then she would fucking fall asleep and, and, and they would just record all night. So this was my first foray into like teen sex romp comedies. Um, cause I'd be like, Hey dad, uh, can I watch uh gray stoke, the legend of Tarzan? Sure. No problem. You know, he, he, he liked weird movies like that. And then if you let it play after the credits, you have another HBO thing come up and man, I remember watching like Tommy boy or Tomboy, um, mm-hmm. Porky's like all at the age of like eight years old, bro. Like <laughs> had to hide that shit, but he, he was so cheap. He would have rent, um, he would before he got the VCRs. He would he he would rent VCRs back in the day, and this is from U-Haul. Yeah, and U-Haul used to rent VCRs, and they used to come in a, uh, a an orange suitcase. <laughs> I, and I found an ad online, and I'll I'll link it to the show or to you. It's fucking hilarious, bro. Oh, of yeah. all the pl- of all the places that you could rent a VCR and like um, movies from. Uh, that one I lived out in Florida was a fucking Ace Hardware store. What the fuck? They got right? it on the game. Everybody was getting on that game, yeah. right? Well, like, I mean, Ace Hardware's are, like, independently, like, owned. Yeah, it's a franchise, but, like, anybody can open up. And then I guess you could kind of, back then, you could kind of do whatever you wanted with your, with certain spaces in there. And this guy had a, literally, you could get Nintendo games, rent VCRs, and VHS tapes. It was weird. Oh, and you can rent like uh, NES games, right? Yeah, that's where I always rented Zelda from. Because why the fuck not? It was closer than going to the video store. So. Really? <laughs> Zelda. Yeah. Did you, did you just you would beat it. Yes, always. Yeah, just in one one shot. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's all. It's all. I only got two days with this mom. You got two days. I'm just sitting, pound it out for. Ch- check your uh, day and a half. Check your um text message that i sent you like text or in skype text if you can i know you're on the phone with us yeah i'm trying to record a show i <laughs> know <awesome>. Just... orange <laughs> that's great <laughs> that's so great <laughs> <laughs> look at the handle on the side just like a suitcase dude oh i love it it says presenting hollywood video rentals yeah h-a-u-l-l-y oh, <laughs> oh no <laughs> That's a fucking gem right there. Yeah, look at all the movies in the back, dude. It's hilarious. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Nostalgia. He, yeah, but it, it, there's Conan, Vacation, Raiders of Uncommon Valor. Look at all these, man. Yeah. Uh, fun fact about Raiders of the Lost Ark. I watched that on uh, Betamax. That's the only movie I ever watched on Betamax because we never had one. But my that's... friend's dad did. And then when he wanted to go over there and have beers with his buddy... They got sat in front of the Betamax and got to watch Raiders of the Lost Ark. Let's see if I can <laughs> see any fun horror movies in the back. I got Humanoids from the Deep. Nice. I love that movie so much. There's a Devo. There's Don't Open the Door. Yeah. Um, King Kong. Um, man, I can't make a lot of these out. It's so... The Creeping Flesh. Yeah. Crawl. Peter Cush. Halloween, um, yeah, the entity. There you have it, man. It's it's all over the place. And then you got like Conan, yeah, yeah. This is great. So it's <laughs> it's been it's been a little over a week since we recorded. Um, so I don't know if you've been watching a whole lot of of stuff, but uh, I have. I have. I, I'll tell you what I watched, bro. Go for it. What'd you watch? I watched. Peacekeeper. Oh, okay. The TV show. HBO yeah, Max. Yeah, really good. Really, really good. Nice. Um, what else? A book of Boba Fett. Um, 
what else movie did I watch? Other than the movies we watch, I watched Snake Eyes, the the GI Joe Origins last night. Uh, I heard it was okay. It's not bad. It's yeah, it's it's a popcorn movie, kind of. Was kind of what the consensus I got from it. Well, if like I'm a comic book GI Joe guy, and I'm a toy GI Joe guy, and the cartoon GI Joe guy, and Snake Eyes like has always had this mystique around him. And if if you're thinking about the comic books, like basically, he was like a Vietnam vet who was a badass, and they they pulled him out of retirement to go help them out, and he hurt his vocal cords and got his face burnt, and that's why he wore the mask. So like this is a completely different type of origin than what what you're given in the comics and what he looks at looks like because. It, not to play like any type of weird race card or anything like this, but like in this in this movie, he's Asian, right? Which is fine, but like in the books, he's white, and that's kind of what makes him ostracized more from the clan that he's a part of. Uh, you know, they're, they're like a ninja. It's like American Ninja, right? We are not yeah. tra- we are not training this round eye, so um, it's kind of like that. So it's a little little it's a little bit different than that but other than that it's um it's okay like you said a popcorn flake lots of action man lots of action yeah it doesn't it doesn't bother me when they go away from origin stories though sometimes like from source material like when they go from a comic to a movie like a lot of people gave the tv show gotham shit for that because like almost all the characters origin stories are completely different if not all of them um a lot of people hated that but i thought it was i thought that was what made the show really great because you didn't really know what was coming, you know what I mean? But they still held the characters kind of true in the way they act and the way they are, but their origin stories were always different. So not yeah. always a bad thing when you mix it up. I've been reading, um, I think I talked about this last week. That's why I kind of got that Conan. I've always wanted a Conan the Barbarian. I've always wanted a uh, um, a sword tattoo there anyways, like a Barbarian sword. But my homie's like, hey, let's 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 just do the Conan sword. I was like, fuck it, let's do it. He nailed it. Came out really good. But um, I've been reading the. I think I talked about this in the last show. Maybe you mentioned it. Read, been reading the Robert E. Howard, complete fucking Conan book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, fun times. What you been checking out, brother? Yeah. So I uh, I went back and watched um, a movie called Unfriended from 2014. I remember when it came out, and it's like a social media kind of horror, a bunch of people on Skype and all that. But I just kind of put it on the back burner for a really long time because it kind of got so much shit and then like last year our friends scott and heather covered it and they both liked it and i was like okay i'll put it on my watch list and i finally watched it and i fucking loved it i thought it was great i thought it was really uh tense um the characters like that you fucking hated because they were douchey and shitty were like really great on screen rather than coming off as annoying to me um i thought it was really i thought it did a really good job i was super impressed by it so I was glad I went back and checked it out because it was awesome. Um, and then outside of that, I watched a new show on Peacock called Wolf Like Me with Josh Gad and Isla Fisher. And it's like a weird comedy drama horror question mark. <laughs> Dramedy horror. Yeah, but it's very, very little to no horror aside from the fact it's about a wolf. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. more about the relationships. But man, like Josh Gad's character and Isla Fisher, they both are so good. Uh, it's just, it's pretty well written to me. Like, and they just have great chemistry on screen together, and it just fucking works. Like, we sat. I don't ever binge watch anything, and we sat and binge watched the whole thing in one night. So, it's only six episodes, but it was damn good. I liked it. <clears throat> It's just six episodes. Yeah. 25 minutes a piece, 30 minutes a piece. It's nothing. That ain't shit. <laughs> no, that's why I was like jamming on out. But I really Get enjoyed it. that. And then I watched a uh, kind of an indie slasher called Psycho Sleepover that had um, Sex for 2008 had Felissa Roses in it for like a nanosecond. But it's like good, dumb indie horror fun. Like it's gory and. There's nudity and just stupid slapsticky kills, and it was fucking fun. She's just uh, barely, b- barely in it. She's like a newscaster at the very beginning of the movie. You know, hey, here's your two hundred bucks. <laughs> just, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Do you hear all the clicking going on? Yeah. Oh, why are you taking your pills? 
I know my wife decided to come in here and I think she's sabotaging this show. Man. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> she's coming in here and getting freaking coat hangers. Like, clack, 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 clack. <laughs> your teachers don't get wrinkled, Now she's screaming. <laughs> I know. I heard that'll be on the show. That'll sound nice. <laughs> yeah. So Love you, Ray. Yeah, so your clothes won't get wrinkled, <laughs> fuckface. <laughs> Just hang my shit up like the woman you are. Just kidding. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, I, I gotta, I gotta, I, I definitely am still uh, waiting to get my horror hound uh, magazine. Wasn't well, uh, that only uh, quarterly too? Like it's only like every three months or something. It's every other month. Every other month, okay. Yeah, but it's cool because they'll just let me know what's coming out the next couple months. You know, I'll be able to keep yeah. up what's what's going on with horror and the new shit coming out. I always say I'm going to get back on that or back on Fangoria, and I never do. I would. I mean, I there's there's some like I kind of like Horrorhound. I mean, I was on Fangoria for a while, and then I was like, it was a little. I mean, it's funny we're com- we're talking about horror movies, but it was just a little too commercialized for me. This so it was kind of like I kind of got onto that kick where I was like, man, it's. It, remember like back in the day, the 1950s, they used to do the pay for play stuff. You know what I mean? And yeah, like for you know we're you know you pay enough of no enough money to a dj or a radio station and they're gonna they're gonna showcase your song right so it's like i kind of feel like that's what it is with like fango and i feel like um brew morgue kind of started going that route where it was like i just kind of remember back when brew morgue first started a long long time ago where it was just like i would just get really cool indie horror covers or retrospectives or really cool stuff and then it just slowly started getting kind of more mainstream like kind of like well what's going to be in the theaters next month you know and yeah who's what are we going to put on the cover and it was like eh, kind of turned me off a little bit you know what i mean um and then i realized there was the, the brothers were the editor in chiefs for both magazines dave and chris alexander i think <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh okay that makes sense that's brothers that are editor-in-chiefs for competing horror mags and we're kind of getting the same covers on both mm. so i kind of wanted to stick to horror hound so we'll see what's up man oh we'll see what happens so let's talk let's get into our feature films man let's do it and uh let's go ahead and listen to the trailer for your film all uh, right the strangeness the, the strangeness it will grow on you uh mm-hmm. let's go ahead and listen to the trailer spoiler it's a vagina ghost monster thing i think i don't know maybe it? i don't oh. know i had a vagina. we'll get there okay we'll be right back let's listen to this trailer send down the meat We have a serious job to do here. I have to go back to the company and tell them whether there's enough gold left in this mine to sink half a million dollars into exploratory digs. You listen to the trailer for the strangeness and um, let her rip, sir. Yeah, strangeness from 1985 um, with a bunch of people in it you probably won't recognize and directed by Melanie Ann Phillips. As but it says David Michael Hillman for some reason, as David Michael Hillman. I don't know what's going on there, but who knows? Yeah, uh, but the film starts off with a couple like out kind of. Uh, they're they're hiking and they're not hiking they're just out in the middle of the night going to this mine um 
and it turns out that somebody has hired them. You find out a few minutes later that someone hired them to like blow up the mine. Uh, because, you know, some people are looking at reopening the mine. There's like a a long history of bad things happening there from Native Americans, like cursing the land. And 16 people had died there. And I guess I guess we're supposed to believe that maybe the I don't know, the Indians or whoever paid them to go blow it up so the people wouldn't come like messing around with it. And so they go down in the mine to try to to set things up. But of course, uh, they wind up getting axed by something you don't really see. A bunch of weird noises down in the cave. Um, and actually, this scene, apparently, this opening scene was shot in a real or, or in a real like mine that they were illegally on. And also, like a couple months after they shot it, they sent down some people to actually reopen that mine. Like literally the plot of the fucking movie. And these guys go down to where they shot that scene and they died from uh, gas. What? Exposure. Yeah. And so the, all the fucking plot of the movie is those two kids die. And then some guys come in to see if the mine's worth opening because there's a bunch of gold down there. But in actuality, in real life, people went down there and died. It's just a weird fucking coincidence. <laughs> so, like, in the movie, this other group of people come down to the mine, you know, to see if it's worth opening. You have, you know, like, your tried and true, like, miners. And then there's, like, kind of the foreman. They have a geologist and then they randomly have a fucking guy that's trying to write a book and his hot girlfriend <laughs> that are just there and he's like always prying them for questions. But the whole he's movie. Like, yeah, he's like, I want to know the he's like talking to his tape recorder and he's more interested in his tape recorder and doing what he's doing other than paying attention to his girl. Yeah, so the whole movie is just them down in the mines and like, uh, you know, it's it's spooky feeling because you're down in the mine and the music actually is good. So it does. It is, going. man. It you feel is. like you feel like tense, but like fucking nothing happens forever. But like you're you're just kind of waiting for it because they do a good job setting it up. But you don't you don't really see much of anything, and there is some like funny goofy dialogue between like the. They did say stuff like giggity giggity and I don't know, there's like dumb fucking words that they use throughout like in conversation because I guess they're trying to maybe dumb down the dumb down the intelligence of the miners. But literally nothing happens 90 percent of this movie and they slowly, you know, they slowly get like split apart. And the geologist, I think, is the first one to die. And it's just kind of disappointing because you get like the build up and the music builds. Like, All right, here we go. We're going to see it. We're going to see this creature. We're going to see a cool kill. And it's, oh, scream, cut away, darkness. <laughs> like, oh, all right, may maybe the next one, maybe the next kill will get to see something. And it goes on and on like that and drove me batshit crazy because nothing fucking happens as aside from, you know, you have your, the first two people die at the beginning, which you don't really see. And then later on, they stumble across one of the guys that they lost and they think that his body was... Um, burnt up by acid because like apparently they in some cases will use acid to like burn away the rock if it's really having a hard time getting through and the acid will get stored up in places and like will you know destroy the body but the guy's pretty mangled and we do get like a decent blood scene here but it's Finally. so short it's so short though like they cut away from it so fast and then my guess is probably because it doesn't actually probably look all that great um <laughs> up close for a long thing but for some reason, I'm still kind of invested in the movie. And it just, they all get picked off one by one. The, the photographer's girlfriend winds up hitting the foreman guy and knocking him the fuck out with a shovel because she thinks it's the, the little creature that they hear down in there. Because at what this they, point... It doesn't even have a name, does it? No, they, they just said it's 16 people died and... You know, that's pretty much it. There's really no name, which is probably why it's called The Stranger. It's like, oh, yeah, we forgot to name this thing in the movie. Um, but, like, man, I wish there was more to talk about. There's really not a ton to talk about until the last 10 minutes. And the final two people, like, um, 
get split up and they get back together and then finally like oh you finally start seeing the creature come out you're like oh what the fuck is this thing and it's like this tall looking worm thing and its head its mouth basically opens up i swear to god it just looks like a giant vagina yeah it's weird <laughs> it's, it's so like on its weird. forehead yeah uh but it's making all these weird noises and um it eventually gets one of the foremen and we have a fucking awesome claymation stop motion scene that is fucking is Ray Harryhausen reminiscent and is very I think it's very, very cool and fucking awesome. Uh and they cut back and forth from that and you know, that's pretty much all you get to see of the monster is that one great stop motion kill. Yeah, where he it, he picks up like the foreman and the guy's all I paid for your help. I want yeah. my gold. That was a pretty cool scene. Stop motion. Um yeah. and there was some once you finally get to see the creature it's really freaking cool looking, I think. But um, it's literally the last nine minutes of the movie you see the creature. Yeah, yeah. And and you do get to see some decent effects where people are kind of buried uh, alien esque ish. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. And there's like, there's some, a couple of shots of like some like weird, bloody animal skulls down in the cave. But it's like so far down in this cave, you're like, why? There wouldn't be any animals down there. So it would have to come out and like drag them down there. There's a puking. Um, there's a puking scene which looks like somebody just filled their mouth up with some Alka Seltzer. Yeah. Just like, uh, yeah, and and what like I think I well I I actually thought it was cool how they got out of the cave. Yeah. They like got like flushed, and like in an underneath an underground like the it exploded, like they set the explosion off and it like flushes them. Out into like off the shore of the ocean, yeah, <laughs> which like was really a, cool, like an underground like, cave that's connected yeah. to the ocean or something, yeah, like a little cavern spring or something, yeah, that was um, decent, yeah. It, so it's all about, like it's not a, I would, it got fucking nothing happens, but like no. it felt it felt like it was going to be so good, and then like nothing, 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 and you're like, oh cool, last nine minutes, and then it's over in three like all right so just fast forward to the last nine <laughs> nine minutes you ain't gonna miss nothing like <laughs> no. you literally could watch the setup while every all the characters are getting introduced and introducing to each other and you can like literally maybe when they go into the cave and then fast forward it to the end <laughs> that's it because <laughs> yeah, it's just... like just a lot of talking and and really dark man yeah really dark like i i think even if did we we watched a decent transfer i know we watched a decent yeah yeah Yeah, it was on amazon prime it was pretty solid um yeah even with that decent transfer that shit was like dark dude yeah i was even watching in the dark (laughs) i still couldn't see it shit you not dude like Literally, like we were talking about, I don't know if we, we caught this in the beginning of the show, but I uh, bought bought myself a, like like top of the line Samsung, right? TV, sixty three inch. Put it in my room, and I'm like, I'm gonna be able to, be able to watch everything in here. And my wife went to sleep last night, and I was like, Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna start watching the strangeness. Turned all the lights off, laying in my bed, kind of meandering with my phone a little bit. Have this movie on, and it's like, man, even in the dark on a nice ass fucking TV on Amazon. That shit was still dark, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, uh, I don't know. It, I don't know. It was super bad. for me. Um, what do you? I, I give it. I give it a two. Solid and, two, bro. And like, it only gets the two because of the the ending. Really, um, it's. I think the creature. If you're like a huge creature feature person, um, you, you. I think it's just to see the stop motion scene is really cool. <sighs> But there's not much substance here. There's not like the, like I said, like they do a good job of building tension with um, with the music. The music is great in this. It um, is. But that's I, I, the I acting's really... not bad. The acting's not great. Um, and I just the, don't think it's something I would ever turn on again. The opening <laughs> credits are really cool. Uh, they was kind of like had like a kind of a Texas Chainsaw Massacre feel to it, like with the the camera. Ching, ching. Chichi. Yeah, and it was actually showing the actors too. So. Yeah, and it was showing the actors like in a in a scared state. Um, so I had some high hopes for it, like, and plus the music, like you said. So, really, in all co- actuality, like, 
I felt, and I think I texted to you, I felt like I was wa- I watched a Don Dollar film for real. Like you could have sw- watching this, you could swear it's a Don Dollar film without the fucking violence. Yeah, no nudity, no violence. Yeah, no nudity, no violence. But it 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 feels like a Don Dollar film through and through. Yeah. Um, so if you're gonna get into this movie, that's what you're getting into is that type of feel. Yeah. Um, it ain't no um night beast <laughs> it's, yeah it's, i mean it, it literally gets a, the, a whole point for the, the stop motion clay face at the end yeah <laughs> that's that's one of the two <laughs> and a couple of cool cu- couple of decent gore scenes you know what i mean like and there is one really i do think it's funny when the the guy that's writing the uh trying to write the book and the one the one dude and him get pissed together and he's like i know it may not seem like it but i love tammy a lot and that's mm. all i have I was like, okay. I don't know why he felt the need to say that to this pretty much stranger, but whatever. It was poor timing. But I like him. Like all yeah. those poor girls. Those poor girls. Like it was just they were stuck down there with a couple of horny men for sure. Yeah. Like like just trying to get laid, and it was just like, come on, guys, just just calm yeah. down. They're not going to fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Like, just relax. Go fuck each other. <laughs> But um, yeah, man, it's uh, I gave it a two out of five. Like yeah, you said. yeah, that too. And and it, it, again, it's a creature feature. You don't see a lot of the creature. It's yeah, it's, like you see, you do see. There's a, some scenes where you see like the arms fl- flailing, but you don't get a full creature shot till the very end. Like you'll see just part of the head or just an arm, uh, which is also like the claim or the stop motion, but it's. Yeah, wait too long, dang it. It will definitely two out of five. It's a really low end creature feature, folks. Go watch it if you're into creature features, but you don't have to as well. So, there you have it. So, um, all right, guys, let's go ahead and get into my pick. And this was a completely blind pick, and I'll get into why I picked this after we listen to the trailer for 1979's. The plumber. Is it because you had to call one? Mm, no. I you am wish a... this you wish this plumber would show up to your house. I know. I need my pipes cleaned. We'll be right back. <laughs> plumber, love. Oh, you must have the wrong unit. Well, you're fifteen C. Yes, but uh, we didn't call a plumber. <laughs> Only way to get at him. Uh, there's a plumber here. He said he had to look at our pipes. I didn't call a plumber. Some of the pipes have to be replaced. Well, how long will that take? Oh, four or five hours. Can't do it today. Tomorrow, okay? Yeah! Short, is, it, is it something that, uh, I mean, is a med- Well, I'm not sure he's a real plumber. He said his name was Max, that he works for the university. You better take a look at the bathroom. <laughs> What's all this? I'm not really a plumber, you know. I'm actually a folk singer. A folk singer? What's funny about that? Well, Stop it! Tra- You're obsessed about this bloody plumber. You don't believe me. <laughs> you are amazing, you know? Trying to dob me in. I know what you're doing. Well, that's good, because I don't know what you're doing. I'm going to get you out of my flat. Your flat? Oh, that mad plumber. If only you'd met him. But I did this morning in the car park. We had quite a chat. But you didn't tell me. He's a bit of a freak. My house. I was a cat burglar. <laughs> I used to go in through the bathroom window and I always carried my tools with me. So if anyone surprised me, I could tell them I was a plumber. Don't you know, don't you know that I'm me, babe? So don't you, don't you turn your back on me, cause I, I've been to Babylon and I, I've seen the Mercury wings flying high. Touched the golden fleece, cause I'm me, babe. Can't you see? Can't you see that I'm me, babe? All right, guys, you just listened to the 1979 trailer for the plumber. That's right. It's a it's an osploitation film from uh it's they call it a psychological thriller. Um so I'm 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 gonna try to tread lightly with this 
kind of. I don't know where to really go with it, but <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, first things first. I, I, okay, so I found this movie because I'm like, obviously we do a horror podcast. I'm like the plumber, fucking there you have it. Boom, let's let's watch this shit. 1979 horror. Um, now with that being said, um, this is also an Oz quote unquote Ozploitation film. And this is Ozploitation isn't something that we've really um, tackled on this show. A- Australian type of exploitation films. Um, and I think probably the most famous Ozploitation film that you'll probably see would be Mad Max or The Road Warrior, um, especially the original Mad Max. Um, and then working on the way up into like, uh, um, what's that movie called? Um, something Back. What is it? I don't know. The giant pig? Razorback. Razorback. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So kind of like that. And I think... Which du- is great. Dust- we've, t- we've talked about doing Razorback on the show before. But we, we need to do it. it. We need I to do it. I fucking love that movie. I haven't and, seen and it in a long time, so... Move, moving all the way up to Dust Devil. You know, like, so... Anyways. Patrick. Yep, Patrick. All those, man. So, so uh, um, the plumber, uh, again, a completely blind pick. Uh, it's listed as a psychological thriller film. And basically, it's about a fucking plumber um, that, well, f- first things first, it, it's written by Peter Weir. And Peter Weir is, um, he, he just, he's directed, directed a lot of uh, high, high profile movies. Um, I don't know, uh, Gallipoli. I don't know if you heard of Gallipoli. That's a pretty big one. Um, Dead Poet Society. Green card, uh, the Truman Show, a little yeah. bit of everything. Yeah, uh, the master. Oh, he also did a, a Fearless with Jeff Bridges. If you ever seen that? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. He's he, so. Anyways, um, so this movie basically starts. It's it's Australian late seventies, um, and kind of starts off with um a, a, a graduate student. And her and her husband, or is it her boyfriend? I don't know. It's her husband. Because they talk about that. Yeah, they talk about their marriage lasting if they wind up going to Sweden. Yeah. So he, it just kind of talks about them like he's taking a shower, she's hanging out. She's a master's student of like anthropology. So she studies like weird African cultures. And Uh, so New Zealand. It was New New Zealand. Zealand. Was it? Oh my God. I'm so sorry. But uh, he leaves the building, goes to work, and, and, uh, you kind of see, like, you get this feel of a giallo type of feel where, like... It does have that, for sure. There's, like, a guy, you're only shooting from the waist down, wearing black gloves and torn up jeans, and, like, uh-oh, what's going on? And uh, he kind of, like, randomly... He, he goes into a, an elevator, and he randomly uh, uh, chooses the button for the ninth floor. And he knocks on her door, announces himself. He's like, my name's Max. I'm the building's plumber. She's like, okay, well, we didn't call for a plumber. And he goes, Hey, I'm just doing, I'm just doing checks and all the buildings and all the pipes, the buildings. pipes. It's like, it's like they didn't call you a uh, typical office. Yeah. Typical office. And, uh, he's a little forward. He's a little, it's just that he's, he's already tense with this chick, right? Yeah. Dude, he's got that, like, uh, <laughs> that body presentation where he's like, um, like he keeps like leaning forward. Like he's just about to walk in without even like asking her, per- her permission, which I actually think is kind of cool because it automatically sets up this like uneasiness between the two. But he's like, because <laughs> she's standing there like, uh, and he's like, Oh, wait, I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in. Uh, uh, and she's like, yeah. uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then she's like he, he starts to fucking like goes into the bathroom and starts like fucking chipping away at the tile under the sink and she's like what the fuck are you doing he's like yeah well this is a part of the job ma'am i don't know what to tell you you know like, literally, <laughs> literally fucking lights a cigarette and just takes a sharpie marks on tile and just starts hitting it with a fucking hammer does nothing yeah. else like what the fuck yeah and and then uh he closes the door and it's like hey i gotta get to my work and like the shower's going on and he's singing all loud in the shower. It's like, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> yeah. Her, and, her uh, husband calls <laughs> and she's like, I think the plumber's taking a shower. 
He's like, whatever. Like he he's more involved with his work. I'm going to get a job. I'm telling you the world, the world health organization has called me. They want to interview me about my work and we're going to be able to go to Stockholm. Just enough about this plumber. You know what I mean? She's like, so that he comes out with his hair kind of wet and he's like, yeah, your apartment's pipes are, are, are fucked up. He's like, back. Pressure, yeah, he's like, your pressure is all like weird and irregular and blah. He just kind of makes up a bunch of gibberish. Yeah, but he's doing like weird double entendres a little bit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, his dialogue's definitely uh, odd. He's like, your pipes need cleaning. You know, and like, be, he's. And to be clear, this dude fucking nails this weird ass character. He does. He does. He makes and, the he makes the whole movie. <laughs> like he's wearing a bumper sticker on the back of his jacket. <laughs> it says, "I want to say, uh, liberal equals free tax or some shit." Liberalism equals less tax. Less tax. Okay. Yeah. And then he's like wearing like all these buttons. So he's kind of like throughout the movie, he comes back, um, and well, she goes into the bathroom, and this motherfucker took a shower, and he's got like the soap bar with suds on the bottom. She's like, what the fuck? Like, is this? Yeah. Doing? And, uh, the, she, yeah, well, the, the relationship, like progress, like the more days he comes by, it like progresses into like just weird conversations. It's like, he wants to just come hang out with her. And then like, once yeah. he like, tries to make her food. Well, Oh, this, that's all sorts of weird shit. Well, like he keeps finding excuses to come back and he makes the bathroom a bigger, bigger, bigger mess. Right. And, you know, it's just, sorry, it's really weird, man. It's there, 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 she's very nice to him, right? Yeah. She's, she's, uh, she's not nice for far too long before she finally convinces her husband to call well, somebody she, about it. She, she makes him a coffee and she makes him like a sandwich and like, he's real dicky about it. And he's like, oh, I could take a sambo. You know, like, you know, for a sandwich, that's whatever they call yeah, it, right? Yeah. And and then she's like, okay. He's, he's like, okay. He goes, but I don't eat meat. She's like, what the fuck? She's like, I got mayonnaise here. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and bread. What do you want? And then so her husband's like, just fucking ignore him. Don't answer the door. Don't do nothing. Right. right? And so as he doesn't fucking answer the door, um, he just comes through the hole in the wall in the bathroom. <laughs> from the other side and he's all do 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 just whistling do 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 and goes into her cabinets and pulls down freaking coffee and she's like what are you doing and he's like oh i thought i'd just return the favor you made me coffee yesterday <laughs> what, the like, what, the fuck? <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> so you're billing this like he's just a weird fucking guy bro and you quite don't know what to make of it do you know what i mean and yeah it just slowly starts to progress and she slowly starts to lose her shit. And she's starting to look like the crazy one to everybody else. Right. Cause like her husband finally meets him. She's like, Oh, he's a really nice fella. Just a little odd. That's what her, um, her husband says. And like, she, at one point she tries to go talk to the caretaker. Cause she doesn't think he's an actual plumber. And he actually tells her at the beginning, he's not a plumber. He's a folk singer. <laughs> it's just my second job. See? <laughs> right. Yeah. But then, like, the other lady down the bed was like, oh, yeah, hey, Max. Like, so, like, oh, so now the, you know, the lady in the, the apartment's like, well, fuck, I'm the bitch, right? Like, I, <laughs> he actually is. Because she would convince herself that he had was just some rando that came in the building. And then, like, you could kind of see her get, like, even more uneasy when she was like, oh, no, really? This is the fucking dude? God damn it. Right. So, it was one of those situations where he, uh. He's like, well, I was in prison. She's like, for what? And he was like, rape. And she's like, he's, oh, I'm just kidding. Ha ha ha. Like, he gets like, really like, <laughs> she's like, what the fuck? Like, so it just slowly progresses. He has these people, her husband has these people coming to town to, uh, they want her curry because she makes the best curry. Yeah. I guess. And sure. <laughs> that bathroom's fucked up and you go in there and this guy's like making an avant-garde art yeah, project like, or something. Yeah, it's so like... the, the first time she got him to go out of there, like it all got put back together kind of normal with some shitty tile work. And then 
it all like blew up and the bathroom basically flooded and he had to come back in to fix it again. And that's when there's like a fucking jungle gym of, you know, steel pipes. Like you have to like duck to get in the front door and bend down to get in the fucking sink. It was like a fucking jungle gym. Yeah. It's like this weird elaborate fucking thing. And one of the guys who go in there that they're, they're hosting for dinner. He, he gets himself trapped in and fucks himself up and, yeah, like the sink falls on him or some shit somehow. But he finally promises to finish the work and that and 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 that he's going to do a fucked up job just to get it over with. You're rushing me, right? And then, sure enough, the fucking plumbing the next day fucks up, and who's back to the apartment? He is good old Max. Max is who back. knows? Who knows? Maybe it'll last ten days this time. It's like, <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> Should we give away the end? Because I think it's worth uh, it. I do, actually. Um, well, you think it's worth to give it away? I do. I do, too, because it changes your perspective on facts a little bit. Yeah, so she... I think, but... I do, too. So she, the lady, the character, the the, the main character, Jill, um, basically, she's she's lost her shit. She's done. Right. She's right. already yelled at him. This yeah, is fucking like, her marriage up a little bit. Right. She can't get through to her husband. She can't get through to her friend that lives like across the way. She doesn't seem to think anything's going on. Like, yeah. obviously, the people that run the building don't think anything's going on. So she's like, feels alone in this, like, she just weird. feels alone in this whole situation. This weird relationship. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so she just kind of becomes deadpan at the end, right? Where she's just like, she don't give a fuck no more. Husband comes home and she's being the good little fucking housewife. And he got his, he's going to, he's got his job. He's They're going to be, they're not going to be there for much longer. They're going to be taken off. They're going to be going to wherever. What do they Sweden. say? Sweden, Sweden. to yeah. study. Yeah. To Zurich and, or whatever. Yeah. And they're, they're going to go to Sweden and, and he, um, you know, so She's things dead. are looking better for them. Things are looking better, but she's already kind of like being very, as a matter of fact, she's not kind of like the doe-eyed deer in the headlight. No, she's like pretty in the avoid beginning. of any emotion, really. She's yeah. Just deadpan. Yeah, she's just kind of avoid of any emotion. She's like, do you like your dinner, husband? You know, like, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And she's and also he, not making any eye contact with her husband at all this whole time. He's like, where's the watch that I gave you? <laughs> She's like, like, I think it was a, a family heirloom from his mom. She's like, I don't know. Well, what do you mean you don't know? Now, all of a sudden, it's a big deal, right? Now, all right. of a sudden, he's like, I don't know where it's at. I don't know where the watch is. What do you mean you don't know where the watch is? So it's like a big deal. And she goes, oh, and I also have $50 missing from my purse. What? I bet you is that plumber, right? And like... <laughs> It this is how it fucking ends. The fucking cops are searching Max's car and they find the watch and the money. And his and his car. And his car because she planted it. <laughs> and yeah. he, he looks up at her, he's all you bitch. Yeah, you fucking bitch. <laughs> you fucking bitch. And he's like a weird, like he goes on weird political Tyrant. rants in it yeah. and, and and just against the man, man. You know, like he's like you know, he's going off against the he's he's like super uber liberal, right? Like or yeah. seems like it. I don't I don't know. But anyways, it's it's like annoyingly. So do you know what I mean? Not just yeah. like and he's going off against the, you know, but it, it's God damn, it's fucking the end. And it just ends with her looking down on him from the fucking balcony and no emotion still with no emotions to still shot and the fucking credits roll. And I'm like, like what? What the fuck? Because he technically does nothing except a terrible plumbing job, really. And is, like, fucking socially awkward, right? Like, doesn't know how to interact with humans at all. Like, the, he's basically, like, on the spectrum, essentially. <sighs> I am going to go out on a not even a limb here. I'm going to say that uh, Ben Stiller watched this movie and said, I'm writing the cable guy. First of all, I'm going to go out on a limb with that. I don't know if you agree with me on that, but I could see that. Um, 
It's definitely a psychological thriller. There is no blood in it. No. Um, technically, nothing. The worst thing that happens to anyone is the sink falling on that guy. Oh, he hits his head, but I think he cut his head before because she opens the door and he kind of fakes it. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that. That's like the only little droplet of blood. Um, this is a complete psychological film, guys. Um, I love the shit out of it. Yeah, it feels like uh, it is a TV movie, by the way. Uh, yeah. It's an Australian TV movie, and it totally feels like a Lifetime movie at times. Because it's like, you know, uh, a woman home alone, worst nightmare, you know, locked in, a, locked in your own home with the plumber, and he's a crazy person. Or is he a crazy person? We don't really know. He just made her uncomfortable all the time and said inappropriate shit. But like, yeah. At, like, and he still doesn't really say anything like, like, the worst thing he does is make the bad rape joke, which was fucking stupid. Like, I don't know why anybody would say that. But, like, he doesn't really, he's always like, we need to get along. Like, he's very forceful and, like, they need to get along. <clears throat> but, like, outside of that, like, I don't know, just seeing that it, it all end like that made you re, like, assess his entire character. And you're like, wait a minute. Like, what did he actually do? Yeah, other than being <laughs> an annoying fuck. Like, right, and, and he a was. terrible plumber. <laughs> like, and had no, like, no, um, social skills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and was a horrible plumber and had no social skills and wrote songs. And, and you're like, did, did he just get cared by her? Is that what happened? <laughs> yeah, we don't know. <laughs> we like, don't really know. I mean, she for wasn't really could have been like a rapist, and he was, you know. But it does a good job of making you think that he's going to do bad things, but he doesn't really do them. But he never does. But he's also, you know, he's fucking with her a little bit too. He's like, yeah, oh, guess I'll have to be here for another ten days. You know? It's yeah, like... I, I ultimately don't think he was like a good dude at all. But I, I, I mad respect. For the ending to make you have to go back and reanalyze that character. Right, right. Um, Whatever way you come out with your thoughts on that is, you know, I think it's totally worth watching um, if you like psychological stuff. It God was damn! Cool. What a what a what a gem! I'm sorry yeah. for me, bro. Like a good solid four out of five. I I yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. Four out of five is good for the plumber. Yeah, but it's not. Uh, it's horror light. Again, it's psychological. Right. Horror. It's horror light. There's not much horror here. Like, I sold this shit on my wife, bro. Like, she don't watch the shit that we watch, and I sold this on her. So, like, yeah. you, you should check it out, definitely. Check out the fucking plumber, man. Like, it's yeah. it's worth it. It's a fun one. And um, I, I, I'd recommend it, man. I mean, it's all over. You can find it everywhere. <laughs> but uh, I know it's out on DVD. Not sure if it has a Blu-ray. I know you could find it on VHS, DVD. Uh, it's all online streaming and stuff. So check it out where you normally check out all your stuff. But it's I hi- highly recommend this movie. Um, I was pleasantly surprised and it was a nice little gem. I won't forget this one for sure. Because there's some shit that I've forgotten that we watched, bro. But yeah. I won't forget the plumber. <laughs> no, I'll tell you that. cool. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we're going to have to we're going to have to reopen uh, second chances pretty soon, bro. Yeah. Oh, speaking of second chances, this was never going to happen. However. Guess what's on Amazon Prime now? Blood Beat. Las Vegas Serial Killer. No. <laughs> it sure as shit is. It popped up when I was uh when I was watching The Strange. I was going through recommended movies and I was like, Mother of God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised that's not on uh, Tubi. Uh-uh. I'm sure it could be on Tubi too, but I was shocked to see it on Prime. I'm like, what? Wow. Well, Prime is Prime and Tubi are both. I feel like what they're competing I, in the shit movie department, uh, which is fine. What I hate about Prime is like they say you go into be like horror movies and it won't give you all the horror movies on Prime. Like a lot of shit you just have to know is on there. Like indie stuff, harder to find like 70s weird stuff is on there, but it will never pop up in your like algorithm. The algorithm fucking sucks. You just kind of yeah, have you, to know it's there. It's annoying as shit. At least Tubi will give you recommendations. So. Yeah, you have to know what you're looking for. You have to know what you're looking for. I'm 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 loving it, man. It's it, it we 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 are finding never ending gems on this show still. Still, yeah. And we're, it's gonna go forever. <laughs> forever. Forever. 
And uh, I hope. Yeah, uh, I, I want to do some. Uh, so on Tubi specifically, I found a ton of like '90s stuff. I'm like, ooh, we should get on the '90s train again. Yeah, dude, I'll look for some. It's, we'll, we'll shoot for some '90s shit the next episode for sure, man. Yeah. We've been shooting. We've been doing '70s and '80s stuff, and let's do. I, I love me some '90s fucking trash, bro. Oh yeah. Like it's funny. Like growing up in the '90s, like you're like, oh, I wish movies like they were like in the '80s. But now here we are, like 2022, and you're starting to realize what we miss. What <laughs> there is some good fucking atmospheric shit that came out in the '90s, yeah. man. Like you really look at the '90s. I can look at the '90s now and be like. It was kind of a gem of a decade. It was a weird decade, but it was... Dude, so, like, just from this show, two off the top of my head that were fucking great 90s gems was Night Angel that we did was fucking yeah, great. Yeah, with the, about um, the um, yep. Lilith. Yep, the Sleeping Car was oh, fucking yeah, great. Oh, yeah, David Naughton. Yep. Um, did we do know? Headhunter? We did do Headhunter. For Halloween? That was a good mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's just some, like, you know, there's a lot of them that just don't get talked about. You're like, fuck, there's some good shit in the 90s. There was some decent shit in the 90s. I don't know. And the X-Files were good. Those were in the 90s, too. So That was the late 90s, but yeah. I love the X-Files. Um, yeah, dude, I, and I, shit, I remember uh, I was a junior in high school, and it was 1993, and I got in a car accident and broke my collarbone and got a concussion, and I was just laid up for probably about two weeks home from school couldn't do nothing and i had a really cool girlfriend at the time and i was she's like hey do you want to take care of you i'm gonna go rent you some movies really nice chick and uh and uh, i said yeah she goes, what do you want to watch it's like get me some action and get me some horror she's like all right she goes i don't know what this is but i rented it for you and it was um whatchamacallit um dead alive nice and like <laughs> just a blind pick like what we do yeah and i and i just remember like what the fuck is this just that watch. movie is great yeah just it was a whole dead alive thing it was fucking hilarious so but um yeah man let's let's uh let's reconvene in a couple of weeks here we'll pick out some good 90s shit um or attempt to anyways attempt to well <laughs> the best that we can man i God damn, I love what we do, but uh, I want to give a shout out to Miss Magpie, Miss Mona, our Mona. podcasting partner. She's going to have knee surgery here in a couple of days, so I want to oh. give a shout out to her, and maybe she'll Send be listening. the good vibes, Mona. We we Send are good vibes. Yes, good vibes to her. So they're gonna put, they're gonna put her back together, just like uh, Murphy says. So. What did the Murphy say from RoboCop? Oh, She's uh... like, Murphy, I'm a mess. He'll <laughs> fix you. He yeah. always fix you. I'm gonna He'll fucking always fix you. I'm gonna put that in the show. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> um, I'll, I'll edit it in later. So, uh, yeah, man, guys, thanks for tuning in, guys. Shout Absolutely. out to Killer Reviews crew and hey, uh, guys. all them, all them guys. And so, uh, we'll see you guys on the flip. Yeah. Good night, Good Irene. Night. They don't fix you. They fix everything. You've been listening to the Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Android Virus and Xandra Kane. Follow us on Twitter at Android Virus, at Xander underscore Kane, and at Cemetery Gates 66. 